Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm recording to the cloud, so it will be recorded uh, in the same location as usual. Okay, so just sharing the agenda there. Uh, just very first topic, um, just want to propose a change to this meeting. Uh, previously, we tried to alternate one at a kind of China and European, more European friendly time, which was 1 p.m. UTC, and then every other week was 5 p.m. But just for simplifying the calendars and things like that, I'd like to propose we have the meeting at this time slot every two weeks, and we add an additional meeting specifically at 1 p.m. UTC, which runs monthly. So basically every month, we will typically have three meetings if none get cancelled. Mm -hmm. so how does that sound to folks? Yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, we had a discussion about covering the APAC uh, meeting uh, in chat maybe a couple of weeks ago. So mm -hmm. basically it's, yeah, so 1 p.m. UTC almost covers APAC. But yeah, maybe we could make it a bit earlier. So something like 11 a.m. UTC so that mm -hmm. uh, we could cover the time zones uh, better. I know that in such case it becomes uh, more complicated uh, for United States. So yeah, maybe noon UTC. Um, yeah, just shifting it a bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, let me throw that out to the, the Gitter chat channel and if you get some consensus, then maybe we can do it at that earlier time. Um, and then the other suggestion as well is, um, I've seen this with some communities that we just pre-assign like for the next set of meetings, different people to, to lead the meeting so we can rotate. Um, and then it doesn't necessarily always have to be the same person. And I think particularly if you're having things in different time zones. Um, so maybe for that, it would just be a bit of text outlining what needs to be done you know, propose the agenda a couple of days before, run up the meeting and then conduct the meeting or assign someone else to take notes uh, as necessary. Does that sound good in general? Okay. I think so. So I'll start reaching out to, I'll plan out the next few and we'll put it at the top of the meeting here and just people can uh, volunteer for specific meetings to lead. Okay, so contributor summit retrospective and Oleg, did we have, um, is that just a to do after get a link? So there are some notes from yeah, a, there are some notes, but we haven't finished processing them. So yeah, I wanted to have it by this meeting, but uh, we had uh, JSOC uh, final evaluations. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I would rather prefer to postpone it uh, till the next meeting. Okay, yeah, no problem. Let's postpone that. And I don't see any other... I guess the GSOC covers a lot of the attendees from the community, so Martin and Marky and Natasha. And is there anyone else we should reach out to for specific feedback? I guess I'm thinking maybe folks like Evelina. It would make sense. Oh. I think Jeff Pierce is one of the um, mentors as well, right? Yeah, he's uh, in GSOC. Yeah. So is his feedback covered in GSOC? I believe so. Okay. We are still collecting feedback, uh, but yeah, Jeff was there and uh, we had some discussions already. So it's rather a matter of uh, processing this feedback and somehow organizing that because now it's rather brain dumps from people. Okay. Okay, so let's postpone that. Um, and then just looking ahead, I think we're just saying we've got uh, a number of activities planned for DevOps All Jenkins World Lisbon. So a hack fest on Monday. On Monday, yep. Uh, does anyone have the date for? Uh, yeah, let me. I'm going to guess that December. It's but... December. <laughs> Uh, am, I right? am I right? It's the very beginning of December, so September, so December, December 2nd. <sighs> one off, off by one error. Okay, um, so 
I'll generally put down these are all day things and we can start just mentioning them to folks so they can start planning to attend. Mm -hmm. And then main mm -hmm. conference are um, the 4th and the 5th. We have December 3rd as workshops and training days. Sorry, which one was workshop and training? Uh, Fifth? The third. Oh, the, the third, third. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some actions before that. We had the rolling deck from uh, which we used in the booth last time, and I think we can maybe a bit earlier ask people to start adding in any updates, making it, um, keeping it up to date, putting in any new features, um, and any other things we want to kind of show off to the community. So I'll put that there so people can keep editing it. And then just mentioning the promotion plan. So as people put the blogs out, uh, we can keep mentioning to come to DevOps World Jenkins World. And Alyssa, I think you're kind of maybe pulling up some more organized promotion around this. Yeah. Um, so I, so for San Francisco, you know how I put this in a Google spreadsheet. So if we're going to, if we're going to share this with, outside of cloud bees what is the best document that i should that i should create this in um i don't know maybe just the list of blogs or people who are committing to blogs just that summary of uh, folks who are willing to write things or mm -hmm. a place where people can up put links to things they've already written which will be part of that pipeline Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, a shared spreadsheet or shared doc. Uh, so, a Google, a Google spreadsheet would be fine? Okay. Yeah, Google Sheets. Okay. Um, but maybe the key thing is just having that kind of bit of text if you want them to include it or um, right. artwork that people can see uh, so they can just be pointed at and say, hey, could you add this to your post when you write it? Okay, so, so I'll make... put it in a drive or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I think that's all at this stage. We'll ramp up as we get closer. Anything else on DevOps World, Jenkins World? I don't think so. Okay, um, it's Google Summer of Code. Oleg, do you want to go run with that? Yeah, just quick updates there. So yeah, basically Google Summer of Code 2019 is over, at least coding phases. Um, it's still not over for academies, but yeah, for academies it actually never ends. Uh, so yeah, with our current results, uh, we have uh, five, pro five projects uh, which reached uh, the final evaluations. So we lost two projects uh, in the first uh, uh, coding phase uh, due to different reasons. Um, and not really the organization, I would say. Um, but yeah, five projects is still uh, quite an achievement. Um, and yeah, all projects are pretty good. We generated uh, a lot of content. So there are something, there are 12 technical blog posts on Jenkins IO. There are also personal blog posts. There are blog posts from other communities uh, which uh, participate in JSOC, for example. Nancy Chohan from uh, Fossi Foundation, and uh, there is also another contributor from uh, CVC Rama who will be participating next, next week in the recordings. So, yeah, uh, we generated some buzz and plus a lot of useful features. Because, yeah, things like uh, Git, GitLab multi branch source, yeah, it was uh, one of the top uh, voted tickets in Jenkins Jira, and yeah, finally it's delivered. So, yeah, I think uh, that overall it's a good result. We are still uh, processing feedback. Uh, there is an open retrospective document. Uh, and uh, if you have any feedback, please uh, put it there. Um, and yeah, uh, then uh, yeah, I think we will uh, just start preparing for the GSOC 2020. And uh, yeah, there is also Mentor Summit ahead. Uh, so there will be a lot, uh, some more events in the next month. Yeah, I think that's it. Seem wildly successful this year. So both in terms of 
people participating projects and then the way people have engaged with the events and written blog posts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, congratulations to, to yeah. everybody involved. Yeah, one note that the yeah, GSOC actually helps us not only to onboard uh, students, it also helps uh, to onboard the mentors and uh, make them a backbone of the community. So this year we had all uh, our previous uh, GSOC students participating as mentors. Uh, and yeah, we also had the mentors who became ORC admins and uh, who are active uh, in the community now. So yeah, I think it's a really a positive thing for the Jinx as an organization. Yeah, and I like that succession planning, just move everybody up. <laughs> well, that's what we do. Perfect. Um, yeah. and, when, and you have the event where all the mentors will get together and go to yeah, it's, uh, the uh, summer of autumn. Okay, it will happen uh, mid-October. This time it happens in Germany. Oh, okay. So no visa is to worry about for some? Yeah, uh, no visa. Well... I've got visa approved. Now I'm just waiting for the passport to come back. Uh, just in time. <laughs> Good luck with yeah. that. But yeah, so regarding Mentor Summit, it will be me and Mark Jackson uh, for going there as uh, delegates. Uh, the results uh, uh, lottery, so maybe we'll have uh, more people uh, going to the event. Let's see. Um, but yeah, uh, in any case, it's pretty helpful uh, with regards to collaboration between communities and also. Uh, yeah, there is a lot to study because even if it's called Mentor Summit, uh, basically it's rather a summit uh, for community leads, uh, for org admins, um, and because yeah, they, uh, it's on conference and everything is about it. Yeah, no, it's, I've heard it sounds uh, good things about it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll uh, to post summaries. Um, I was going to just mention um, sorry, I'm just waiting. Mm -hmm. the, for outreachy, the next period is coming up very quickly, so we have to register the community by September 5th if we want to participate. And I spoke to Matt Sicker, and he's happy to mentor, but what he says is the audit log program uh, project, which had been the previous one for the last couple of rounds, that's more or less um, come to the end of its usefulness as a, a project for interns to work on. So he needs, uh, he was suggesting we, if we could find any more ideas or other things that would work, um, we'd sort of need project suggestions. So I was wondering, is that something, I know GSOC normally does a lot of brainstorming. Is there somewhere we can look for a pool of previously suggested ideas? Yes, uh, just a second, I will uh, post the link. Uh, basically, we can uh, look not only for project ideas, we can also uh, look for mentors in, in GSOC, especially for the winter period, because uh, there is no, so there is some activities for GSOC uh, during the winter, but uh, uh, not uh, coding and the mentors uh, are more is free. So you can uh, navigate to the link I provided. Uh, there were something like 27 project ideas. Uh, some of them are well processed. Some of them already got potential mentors. So they got some feedback. Uh, so yeah, we could use it as a source of uh, projects for outreach. Uh, and yeah, basically yeah. I also use uh, it as a pool for community bridge. Great. One of the leftover stories uh, was about um, machine learning uh, projects because we mm -hmm. really wanted uh, to run this project. We had a great mentor team. Uh, we weren't so successful with regards to student applications. So this project is ready to go in uh, a week if you find uh, good students and a way to run that. And there are other projects in such state. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'll start off with that one and then anything else that, um, yeah, if there's any other ones you think we should take a closer look at, you can let me know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how pretty useful. Uh, do we need for the future? Um, but definitely in the one to two projects. And I think I might like to try to do a documentation one again, but against the subject to mentors, uh, just because we can widen the scope, although, yeah. uh, uh, again, I'm not sure it necessarily 
markets that well to specific docs folks. So yeah. regarding the documentation, we have a documentation seat meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I already put a topic about uh, looking for community documentation project. Well, uh, taking uh, the timing, uh, we can apply, uh, yeah, we can uh, do the, it uh, for outreach. So basically, uh, for community bridge, uh, you don't need uh, to start it right away. So we can apply and see whether we can uh, get students in outreach. Great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Comments on Google Sum of Code or Outreachy? Is there a plan for Outreachy retrospective? Um, let me find out from Matt. Yeah, I think they're wrapping up now. I'm meeting with some of the interns as well. So we still have some one-to-one -one schedule just for me to get their feedback. Um, and then maybe just a general mentors and everybody can, can do that. Mm -hmm. so question. Yeah. It would be good to do. I don't think we've formally done it in the past, but I think we can get better at that. Okay, if you do that, I would like to join. Perfect. So moving on, um, this is going to make a quick quest, uh, quick comment on kind of social media and a Twitter account. So I had once upon a time, I would do these monthly updates, which would just consist of me asking Tyler to download the Twitter analytics um, and then just pulling out some key numbers and posting them to the mailing list. Uh, but that's just kind of fallen off the radar, but I just thought I'd take a moment to highlight the number of followers there. But it's something uh, which would be good to kind of revive at some point. And similarly, for other channels like WeChat, I think Linux, uh, Rick was doing things there. And then potentially, if there's anybody interested or we can nudge anybody who wants to kind of help out with that, I'd love to yeah, help enable people to get access. So... Yeah, I'll like just say the word and <laughs> well, well, I'm I an, think Yeah, I already commented in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a native speaker, uh, but at least I can help with retweets, etc., especially in the European time zone. And yeah, regarding content writing, yeah, we can uh, collaborate uh, to make it uh, better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I think the way to do it, we have to officially kind of do it just through the governance meeting. So I could add it to the agenda for next time. Uh, well, yeah, when we have next time governance. But basically, we have Jeb, and I believe that uh, this Jeb for Twitter, and this is Jeb 13. It's mm -hmm. all the uh, BDF delegate. So we don't really need a governance meeting uh, to get it approved. We need a BDF delegate to process it. Yes, um, uh, which in this case is Tyler. So maybe I could just ask him to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it does say in the Jeb that we just have to show someone who's been doing contributions and then get get general buy-in and then if everybody approves it then he'll enable it so exactly so yeah. maybe definitely uh, delegate is a lean cool. okay um and then the facebook group i don't know anything about that facebook or linkedin who has access and if we should try to revive them yes yeah, so um, there was uh, one uh, contributor, uh, sorry, I forgot the name. So basically uh, there is a Jenkins Facebook group, uh, which has uh, um, well, quite a lot of subscribers. Uh, just a second, I'll find that. And uh, for a while uh, there was uh, manual reposting of uh, YouTube uh, videos, blog posts uh, there, uh, but uh, it doesn't longer happen. So I wonder whether we could uh, at least set up some uh, automatic one. So just a second, uh, yeah, I found the group. Um, yeah, I don't know. Alyssa, do you, do you know anyone who has access to those? No. So no, to, I don't. Yeah. have to track that down. Yeah, so there is only one person who has access. 
I believe that I got some kind of access when I was helping with reporting events there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, Malcolm Groves, uh, who is a manager of this group. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe reach out to him. And... Yeah, if you could just set up a re automatic repost for Twitter or whatever, it would be also a nice uh, start. Yeah. Just, yeah, some additional uh, bus and heads. Okay, and then just finally, last one is just the jams and event mailing list. I think we saw uh, with some activity both <laughs> Alyssa and myself have been going, hey, everybody, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, now I'm kind of out of the water of, from San Francisco at this point, so I, I'm trying to catch up. But um, I went into uh, the meetup, our meetup account last night, and I think things has changed a whole lot. And I couldn't figure out, you know, uh, some of the things that I was able to do previously. I couldn't figure out how, where to, to get things done. So, like, you know, um, Edson wanting, me, uh, wanting us to make him the organizer. I just couldn't figure out how to get that done. And so I... I, I chased it up with Max and said, like, yeah, I know how to get it done. And so I, I met with Max this morning. I said, where, where is it that I'm missing? And he's like, oh, he's not seeing the same thing. So they, they changed a lot of stuff in Meetup. Mm -hmm. So I'm setting a meeting up with um, the folks at meetup.com for them to walk us through uh, what has changed and, you know, how we can – do the things that we were able to do before. Now we can't figure out where to find, you know, how to do it. But then also um, I will be, um, I should be able to figure out how to give you Tracy access after I meet with them. So that's, sorry, that's like a long winded answer. Actually for that meeting, um, is, would it be possible to find out if we can pick up the conversation about moving it over? Because uh, when Skylar last had an interaction, so we were talking about, you know, how do we move all these meetups uh, to a CDF managed meetup pro account? Mm -hmm. And it, it was either, you know, can we hand over our pro account and, try, you know, give that to CDF or does CDF start up its own meetup pro account and then we just move the jams? So I think in both cases, but I don't really understand this. One of the things that Skylar reported back was either way um, there's an impact for the jams because the, the URL changes or something like that. Uh, but I didn't really understand the specifics and I didn't understand if it was the case for both things. Like, you know, are we, we want it to be as seamless as possible, but, if there is a cost to moving it, we want to understand what that is so we can communicate it clearly. Yeah. Um, so if there's anything you could find out about that, because I think that's the only thing preventing us from going ahead uh, with, with doing the move, and I'd love to do that as soon as possible. Okay. So then, um, so if we transition over to CDF, um, so for so right now, if I was to go to the meetup.com for Jenkins, it will be uh, meetup.com slash pro slash Jenkins as the mm -hmm. URL. Yeah. So we'll probably need that change. So then what about all of the, um, the branding? So I guess that would need to change to CDF as well. Um, yeah. So I expect the way it's going to, Go is that CDF are going to set up their own Meetup Pro account, mm -hmm. but we want to then move the jams across, yeah. um, either wholesale or in consultation with the owners. But yeah, either way, I think the Cloudbees one, we then kind of mark it to be deprecated. Uh, so we give it an end of life date. So only people who, if the jams are dead, then nobody moves them. They don't go anywhere. They just kind of go. But um, ideally if we could just move them all across and just tell people this is happening so they don't really have to care. But I don't know if that's reasonable to expect. Right. Uh, what do you think, Ola? Uh, so one is with moving accounts. 
there should be no problem as long as uh, the uh, link redirects work. But uh, mm -hmm. the branding topic uh, which was brought up uh, by Lisa is quite different. So something in the beginning of summer, Scarlett uh, took action items to reach out to jam organizers to see whether they would be willing to rebrand to continue delivery meetups, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would guess it has never happened. So, but that's uh, like what Alyssa is talking about. It's just the the landing page for the pro account, but that wouldn't affect yeah. the branding. For each jam could stay a jam if they wanted to. So. Yeah, if we uh, just talk about the link of the link page, that's perfectly fine. If I think, to. was that the case, Alyssa, like w the branding you were talking about? Um, yeah, that? so, Let's well, that's, see if I can see. so just, just the, the landing page and I guess also the individual pages as well. What do we want to do with that? So just, do we just want to leave that alone as is? And I think we want to give people the choice um, so they can choose to up level uh, to to be continuous delivery meetup, or they could stay jams. But yeah, so this page would change, mm -hmm. and then this would be CDF. But any individual page, for example, that one, um, they should be able to keep it exactly as is, unless they want to change. So if they want to change. Um, then they can so mm -hmm. like this this would okay. keep its logo okay. but then in addition we would you could also have uh, a tecton area meetup or spinnaker area meetup and they'd all be kind of shown in this one map it won't be a problem so yeah, in the worst case you can just uh, add the Jenkins uh, to the search field and they get all uh, Jenkins meetups Sharing yeah. the same account it will be perfectly fine. So, so you would do that, and then we'd have. Oops. Uh, yeah, problem. <laughs> uh, report to meetup. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's try and push ahead with that. So, if you could kick off those conversations, Alyssa, and then yeah. once, if you think the the answers are kind of sound pretty okay, then we can connect probably our meetup account exec with the CDF folks one mm -hmm. uh, and just connect the dots to get that done. Okay. Yep, I'll let you know. Yeah, I don't know if it's, if we did have to get each meetup organizer to actually move the group themselves, I don't know how good or bad that is. It would be good because you then see which meetups are actively engaged but it would be bad if we just sort of lost a whole bunch. But then again, if they're not active, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. So I, I think this is a good time just to revisit the active ones and the non-active ones. Um, so th I think this is going to require some dedicated time and just going through that list. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make sense for us and unless somebody wants to step up and be the organizer, right? And if not, then it doesn't make sense for us to keep paying for this. It's quite expensive. Like for, for ghost meetups? Uh, the what, Tracy? Ghost, I said ghost meetups. As such meetups where just don't run events and the yeah. organizers have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it does incur cost. You okay. have point over them. So the only thing there is that you, if you consider deleting them, uh, when uh, organizers step down, there are automatic messages being sent uh, to uh, jump participants to see whether somebody wants to keep them running. Right. Uh, so if we could do something like that before deletion is oh. two week or one month period, then it would be really helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan that I I would take you know i just i i wouldn't want to just delete it because a lot of these has you know quite a good number of members um in each group so i'm hoping that somebody will be, would be willing to step up but you know if nobody was willing to do it then we need to delete it okay mm -hmm. great um yeah so then just coordinate where we need to update how you start the meetups and just redirect that to yeah, I think there is a CDF page already that had been started for it. 
I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Oops. So if folks want to review this as well, uh, it's the first version of um, once it's set up. Is that linked to anything? No. But this would talk about the new process for people joining. So this is, I think, in standard how Linux Foundation run them. So any feedback, uh, we should get those out to our community to see if they have any comments. I think the main difference uh, was here, they expect you to create your own jam and then ask for it to be part of the account rather than getting, like I think how we do it with the Jenkins and correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa, people email and say, please, could you create me a jam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this one is they then, create the jam, they run an event, then they ask for it to be added to, to, the, to the pro account. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because we create it under the pro account, and then, um, and then we make the the member organizer. So I don't know how it would work if the individual page is already created, then links to the pro. But I can check with meetup.com. Yeah, that is an easy way to transition meetups, and I think that the CD Foundation's approach is actually pretty good. Because mm -hmm. uh, what we experienced that, that uh, yeah, there are many people requesting meetups, uh, but uh, in many cases, uh, there have never been meetups uh, in meetup groups we created. Uh, if yeah. uh, a person uh, is, uh, organizes a first meetup, yeah, even if CDF helps with promotion by retweets or whatever, uh, there is already a kind of commitment there. So, yeah, I think uh, it's much better. Yeah. Okay, so let's promote that. And then I think also we'll, I think we'll be asking the board to um, enable something like, you know, a $50 swag voucher once you join to get stickers and everything sent. So I think it's good that people can show they've already been running them before they just kind of ask for the swag. Yeah. So, um so there is a sole uh, request, uh, well, a, a request for a sole jam in Korea. Okay. Should yeah. we have them follow this process or? Um, so does it cost people anything to start a new meetup? It doesn't if there's few members, is that right? I thought that was the case, but I don't know if it's still the case. Now. About your credit card. Um, and basically there is some grace period, but then you start paying unless you close your meetup. At least uh, that's what I've seen last time I was creating meetup uh, outside uh, Jenkins meetup. Okay, I thought it, you know, it used to be free for, I thought, less than 50 people, but that was a long time ago when I did it. So let me find out. I'll go find out just to see. Oleg, do you, um, do you uh, own more than one meetup groups? Mm, yes, I probably own something like eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I so when I looked into this, which is a long time ago, if you had like one meetup group, then it would be free. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me double check on that, but maybe we just ask them to uh, start the group and mention we're doing this transitioning. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe I don't have a good answer now, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let me, let me see what I can, when I talk to the meetup people, um, see what they say, and I'll, I'll respond to the uh, to request yeah. for the Korean jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, one not related really comment that in October, they will be October 1st. I've already started reaching out to some meetup organizers to see whether they would like to host local events. So yeah, if there are disruptive changes, it would be rather preferable to have them before October or after October. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Good it's to note. minor thing, but yeah, I don't expect us to have many meetups, maybe five. Good. Okay, yeah, let's see if we can drive that forward uh, in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Anything else? Okay, then next meeting, um, I guess, no, I expect it to be in two weeks at this time uh, until we agree uh, what the date and week of the, of the APEC friendly one will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Tracy. Bye, everybody. Thanks all. I'll stop the recording and uh, post it later uh, to YouTube. Good. Thank you, Oleg. Thanks, Thanks Oleg. Thank you all.